the word of God revealed. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. St. John 16, 13. At the time of physical as well as mental and spiritual distress in this country and abroad, there was a seeking for divine reality. The philosophies of men were inadequate to cope with humanity's problems. Man had reached his extremity. The people and the world were at a place where nothing short of God could help and lift them. Then came the electrifying words, God is here. And in our day and in our time, they found him teaching and preaching in the little fishing village of Sayville, Long Island, New York. At his home in Sayville, believers drawn from all walks of life and racial abstractions gathered around the abundant banquet table to fellowship with the living Christ. Never had such words of wisdom and power from the infinite one fallen on the ears of humanity. The words flowed from his lips in a never-ending stream. Words of life and spirit and love. They were so numerous that the small staff who had voluntarily set about to transcribe them could not keep up with their transcriptions, nor could the press publish them all. And many of these wonderful words have been buried until this very day. Now a larger staff is busy getting them out to the press so the world can benefit. The following are jottings from the early notebook of one transcriber recorded for the enjoyment and enlightenment of some and as foundation stones toward a perfect world for others. I thank you, Father.
the divine words from the notebook of John Lamb, installment number 60. At this point, one of the followers said he had been living for some time on money that he had made and laid away in the past, and that he had not been doing much active work although he had been loaning his money out on interest in cases where it was needed. He wanted to know if he was wrong. Father said, But maybe when you were working, you saved up some so that you are not imputedly or reputedly taking, eating, or wearing things that are not your own, but belong to someone else or depending upon someone else. I say, be of practical service. If I should feel that my service that I am giving was not worth at least as much as a man could earn in a day at day laborer's work, why then, I would think that laborer's work would be the most valuable work. Whatsoever work is the most valuable work. Why then, that is the kind of work I should give. So then, as I say, everything works together for good to them that love the Lord. But if one really loves the Lord, why he will not love self, desiring not to be of service, loving self and not being self-supporting. Again, the previous speaker asked what was the proper thing for him to do. Father replied, There are thousands of people that are not physically working, but they are putting their money to an exchange. Those that have money. There are thousands of people that are not infringing upon the rights of others, that are not becoming a public charge. In politics, we may say, speaking in legal language, they are not becoming a public charge, don't you see? Then that is different. If a person has money and can and does not infringe on the rights of others, that is their business when they do it with their money until it is gone. Then when it is all gone, then go on and be independent just the same and trust in God and let God give you some work to do or make a way so you will be fully independent. Another follower said that he was among a number of employees discharged by the city, but instead of regretting it, he had been glad for he had been free to attend all of the meetings and he knew Father was going to take care of his financial needs. Father continued, Well, you know, you have the seed idea that you claim you've got from God, and the advocating of a practical religion, and so it was, and so it is, a true seed idea of and through all men, and it must be recognized. Whatsoever expression of truth is really evangelical, in other words, in harmony with the life and the teachings of Christ, it can be recognized as being okay. So then you believe in practical service, and so you can be of practical service according to your ability, and whatsoever classification you may have for such purpose. That may be your ideal. It is wonderful. But in working in the service, there are those that are also working in the meetings, as it may be termed, and yet they are carrying on daily occupations just the same. Some of them live in service and work in the meetings. Some of the lady angels live in service and will come to the meetings almost every night. For in the truth, we do not have to prepare our sermons, for they were prepared before the foundation of the world. 
Don't you think that we could have a pretty good magazine off of all that I say and all that you say and all that the other ones say? Adjourned at 1.25 a.m. The following report of the meeting is taken from the record of another transcriber, and Father's words from the notebook of John Lamb follow. There was a wonderful public meeting held in Haskell, New Jersey on July 4th, 1932, at the American Legion Clubhouse. There were spacious grounds around the clubhouse, and the dozen or more buses that went there with followers from New York and the many automobiles from all parts of New Jersey were easily accommodated, leaving plenty of room for those who wished to picnic outdoors under the trees. As it was a beautiful day, there were many of these, and they seemed somewhat loath to go into the meeting. When Father went in, however, they followed, and it was a sight certainly never seen in Haskell, the hall jammed with all that could possibly squeeze their way in, and crowds waiting on the outside on one of the major holidays of the year to attend a so-called religious service. No doubt, it has never been seen anywhere since the days of 1900 years ago. Such a multitude on such a day, eagerly reaching out for the water of life, which they recognize as flowing so freely for them in the body of Father Divine. The meeting had been in progress all day, and Father's presence was felt, but when he entered in person, a demonstration followed which lasted for nearly ten minutes. Mr. Alexander started a song, Joy to the world, the Lord has come, which was sung with great joy and enthusiasm. This was followed by another one. This is God, your Father's table in this land. Won't you eat, drink, and be merry? Eat, drink, and be merry. Won't you eat, drink, and be merry in this land? Father then sang a song. So many blessings, you cannot count them all. Continuing with one million blessings, you cannot count them all, and so on up to decillions of decillions of blessings, you cannot count them all. Then he said, Now that is actually my experience. I candidly say that there are millions of blessings, and you cannot count them all. And even if you enumerate up to decillions, and then say decillion times decillion. I still say you cannot count them all, for the blessings of God are past finding out. They are beyond the comprehension of the human mind. You cannot count them all. I often think of it, and then I think about how far it is from here to heaven, the way man has described heaven to be. It is wonderful. It has been well sung that there are so many blessings you cannot count them all, and that is what I came for. I came to bring to your conscious realization the materialization of the limitless blessings that are in storehouse for those that love God, to realize that the blessings are limitless. You may multiply them, as in that song we sing in another key. You can multiply them from thousands to millions, and from millions to billions, and from billions to trillions, and from trillions to quadrillions, and from quadrillions to quintillions, and from quintillions to sextillions, and from sextillions to septillions, and from septillions to octillions, and from octillions to duo decillions, and from duo decillions to decillions, and then we multiply decillions times decillions, and you do not know what that is. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. 
That is why I enumerate up to decillions times decillions. It is because we have at least that many blessings, and then we could have many more. That is why I sang that song. There are so many blessings you cannot count them all. It is indeed wonderful to realize that the blessings in this present time, here and now, are as the seed of Abraham in number. They cannot be numbered by the count of man, for they are limitless. Therefore I came to bring to your conscious realization that there are limitless blessings for one and for all, flowing so free for you and for me. And how do you get these blessings? By living in exact conformity to the life and the teachings of Christ. I mean the teachings that have been recorded by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And by letting this mind, this mind here, Father pointing to his forehead, I say letting this mind right here be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. This mind was in the form of God, and this mind thought it not robbery to be equal with God, and this mind made itself of no reputation. Now aren't you glad? For this mind took upon itself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. This mind became appointed unto death as though it was the death of the Christ. It was as though it was the death of the cross. But since God has exalted him now and given him a name above every other name, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee must bow? This mighty holy name, this name that heals your every want. It is manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. Now aren't you glad? This name will set the prisoner free, for someone realizes that it did the same for you. Aren't you glad? This mighty holy name, I say you can jot that down in your vocabulary as a living motto, if you will. I say this name will set the prisoner free, for that is what it did for you. It is a name that bids your sorrow cease. It is a name that will charm away all fears. There shall be no more sorrow in this name, neither shall there be any more crying, for the former things are passed away, and there is no more sea. Why? Because the tabernacle of God is with men, and he is now dwelling with them, and God himself shall be with them, and shall be their God, and they shall be his people. This mighty holy name, which you all may claim, this name will set you free. Name in Hebrew means nature. Then I said, this mighty holy nature, it is wonderful, it is wonderful. When you are changed from nature to grace, when you are changed from the flesh to the spirit, when you are changed from materialism to spiritualism, when you are changed from mortality to immortality, then and there, and here and now, you shall be putting on this mighty name that will charm your fears away and will bid your sorrows to cease. And then you, as well as I, will be able to enjoy and realize these infinite blessings for which Christ died, limitless blessings for one and for all. I have come to bring you all health. I have come to bring you all peace. I have come to bring you all love 
and all power divine, this mighty holy name, I say at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee must bow, those that are in the heaven above and in the earth beneath, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. So I know you can see it is true, for they have come unto me, and in your very midst, aren't you glad, this mighty holy name, there is joy in the land, for there is joy wheresoever I am. There is life in the land, for there is life wheresoever I am. There is love wheresoever I am, for he is love, and that is what I am. I came to gather the elect from the four corners of the earth. It is wonderful. There shall be no division among you throughout the whole universe. For every nation, every language, every tongue, and every people shall enjoy of this wonderful love and shall sit at this table that no man shall be able to make you ashamed. For this is the table of God, the great marriage supper of the Lamb. For the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And I have come to let you know that all things in Christ are now ready. Come, for the supper is spread. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you shall live. This mighty holy name. These are some of the blessings in this name. These are some of the blessings in this name. This mighty health, this mighty life, this mighty joy, this mighty love in this name and this mighty unity, and this contentment, and this happiness that cometh not by the will of man, nor by the will of the flesh, but of God. For this cause came I into the world to bring you all in one. It is written, I pray not that thou shalt take them out of the world, but that thou shalt keep them from evil. I pray that they may be one, even as we are one. And as long as you are divided, you are subject to the evil. But when you are unified in one infinite whole, then you will manifestly be the infinite brotherhood, the Son of God, and the infinite fatherhood, the Father of all. Then you may be called the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. If there is no division among any of you, and no division among all. That is what this mighty love will do for you. It will bring you peace, and joy, and health, and success, and prosperity. And you bring yourself into this great at one by recognizing God, your Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ, your Elder Brother, and by recognizing yourself as an heir, and a joint heir with him, and not only a joint heir, but as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. Therefore we can rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of great glory. For if you are sick, all you must need to do is to make your mental and spiritual contact, and you can be healed. I don't have to see you. I do not have to hear you. You do not have to see me nor come near my dwelling place. But make your mental and spiritual contact and you will be blessed of the Lord. For there are blessings here and blessings there and blessings everywhere. For I am here and I am there and I am everywhere. I know you all are happy. I know you all feel this mighty love. It is wonderful. This mighty love goes forth, the seeming electric touch that transforms the world. Aren't you glad? This mighty holy love, this mighty love, it will burn up envy. It will burn up strife, all bigotry, all prejudice, and it will cast out all fear. 
and it will establish the kingdom of God in your heart and in your mind. And you will be able to live with God right here in this present world, right here on this ground. That is what all of this is about, dear one. That is why the whole world has gone after it. It is so fascinating. It is so fascinating, don't you know? It seemingly bewitches you, don't you know? It seemingly bewitches you because it is so fascinating. And it is so much like magic, don't you know? It draws you into this mighty love, and therefore it causes you to love the Lord thy God with all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength, and causes you to love your neighbor as yourself. It is wonderful. It breaks down the barriers of races, divisions, prejudices, and distinctions of every kind, and unifies the children of men as one man at Jerusalem, and brings them into this great infinite whole, that they may be the collective body of Christ, being the infinite Son of God, not sons as many, but the Son as one, consisting of the collective body of God, the collective body, the infinite whole, being the infinite Son of God that is incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away. On this basis you will be able to live and be healthy. You will be safe. You will be happy, successful, and prosperous. And you will be a living factor in the hearts and lives and minds of those that you come in contact with. For you will be a sample, and as an example, and an outstanding picture for the whole big world, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. I know you all love this mighty love. It is so fascinating, I say, the whole world has gone after it. Every nation, tongue, and people has gone after it. And it has gone forth receiving electric magic touch. And it is transforming the world and bringing nations in closer harmony. This mighty, holy love. But it had to come out, apparently. And it has established itself and come out from America as this day is supposed to represent the Declaration of Independence for which this great cause stands. This great cause stands for the Declaration that was made for this country, for this country as a country or as a nation, when a few bold and heart-searched and heart-tried souls embarked on the Mayflower. When they came to this country seeking religious liberty, the seed idea of the Christ was implanted in the soil of their souls, and it was known there and then to the Almighty that it must go out till it would be developed and brought to fruition in America. For this cause it was recorded and signed through and by the Declaration of Independence that every man would be privileged to serve God to the dictates of his own conscience. And by being allowed to serve God in America to the dictates of your own conscience, we have here those of every nation and every language and every tongue and every people. They are coming to America seeking religious liberty. Now aren't you glad? As they came to America and sought religious liberty here in America, they have found religious liberty. It is indeed wonderful. And by finding this religious liberty, you have been enabled to serve God to the dictates of your own conscience. And by so doing, there are a few of you who have lived in conformity to the life and teachings of Christ. And being governed by your highest intuition and moved by your own volunteer volition, you have brought Christ to fruition in your lives, and now he stands as a living example to the whole round world. And Christ in you, and Christ in me now, 
will make the whole world what it ought to be. Now aren't you glad? For you are now the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. For this cause came I into the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his Son, that whoever believeth on him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. I came to reproduce and to bring into fruition the sonship degree in your lives as well as mine, and to manifest him to the world as the light of the world. For he declared, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now aren't you glad? So glad. Your hearts have been tuned to sing God's praise. It is wonderful. It matters not what your sorrows or your troubles may be. All you must need do is to call on me. All you must need do, I say, is to call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. For the time has surely come that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said this mighty holy name, this mighty holy nature. I know you are claiming it. It heals your very body. It heals your soul. It heals your mind and makes you new. And it makes you true. And it makes you faithful. And it will make you useful. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. This mighty holy name. I have impregnated your spirit. I have impregnated your mind. I have impregnated your bodies with this mighty nature of God. And therefore you are a new creature. You are changed from nature to grace. You are walking in the newness of life. You have put off the old man with all of his deeds, and you have put on the new man. And now you are walking in the newness of life. And now you are just like Christ. The little leaven has leavened the whole lump for Christ. The leaven of your soul has leavened both soul and body and made you every whit whole. Now aren't you glad? It is wonderful. As I said, God so loved the world that he gave his son. And that seed idea was brought to America on the day that this day stands as a memorial for it stands as a declaration of independence, a day when it was declared that the United States of America was to be independent from all bondage and all encumbrances, free from all obligations, and free from being responsible and subject to any other country. And it also brought here citizens, and even those that would become to be citizens of the United States, and even brought you in your want, that the seed idea of the Christ might be brought to fruition in your lives, and that you might be the manifester and the manifestor of the Son of God on earth among men as the Redeemer of both it and them. Now you can rejoice on this foundation, for this foundation is incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away. It is reserved in God for you. I know you all can rejoice. You can be exceedingly glad to make this mighty contact. It is indeed wonderful to know your privilege in God, to be freed from all adverse conditions, free from segregation, freed from all prejudices, freed from all denominations, creeds and colors, from anything of that kind as a child of a living God and as a kingdom of God on earth among men. And you can rejoice and be living in this way, dear ones, if you will do it. Then if you have a pain, 
Just call on my name. If you have an ache or pain, if you have any kind of diseases or afflictions or troubles of any kind, all you must need to do is to say with all your heart and soul and mind and strength, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. And the joy of God will come in your life and you will be manifestly the living child of God, of peace and of contentment and happiness and love, for you shall have rightfully contacted your God. Now, it is not that one must necessarily contact me personally. He just calls on my holy name. It is wonderful. Make your mental and spiritual contact. Unify yourself with the infinite whole. Know that you are the child of the living God and that he dwells with you and within you and that you are one with Christ and one with God and you have the magnetic power within yourself. For it is written, As he is, so are we in this present world. And you all can see that I have a mighty magnetic power of love. I have the life magnet of the world that will draw all men unto me. For this is a mighty healing love, a love that has been purified. This mighty love that has been made into this mighty love that has been tried by the fire and comes out pure, incorruptible undefiled, and fadeth not away. This mighty love. There are limitless blessings flowing free for one and for all, and none need lack in God's abundance, for there is a full and a plenty for one and for all. Take these thoughts in, dear one. And the very peace of God will be with you even as it is with me. For the Christ in you and the Christ in me will make the whole world what it ought to be. It will stop you from telling lies. It will stop you from contemplating murder. It will stop you from stealing. It will stop you from having evil in any way. It will cast out of you all bigotry, resentment, anger, envy, and strife. It will set you free from all such conditions. It will establish you in the rest of peace and the joy of love. And love and the joy of love will be your portion here and now, wheresoever I am. Then you will not have to carry a gun. No one that has been purged with this Living current of love will have to carry a gun. They will not need any permits to carry guns, and they will not have to carry any in violation of the law without a permit. For this mighty love will be their protection. It will be their refuge, and it will be their strength. It will be their stronghold in the time of need. It will be a rock in a weary land and it will be a shelter in the time of storm. It will cause you to love those that hate you. It will cause you to do good to them that despitefully use you. It will cause you to pray for those that hate you and persecute you. This mighty, wonderful love. I know you all cannot help it because this mighty, holy love is such a magnet. It will draw you unto me. I know you cannot help but love me because this mighty love is a magnet and then it has all of the powers of the electric current that is in the world. This love is stronger than death. It will bring all men unto me. It will make you love me with all your heart. For when you went after this love, as I say, the whole world has gone after it. It is so fascinating. And when you went after this love, you found you were going after me. It is wonderful. It is indeed wonderful. I often say that if you are undesirable, 
charge yourselves up with this mighty courage of love. If you are undesirable, if you are undesired, and if you are an undesirable person or persons, charge yourselves up with this mighty current of love and with this mighty current of life, and you will be desired of all mankind in all walks of life. They all want me, even those that claim to have been prosecuting and persecuting me. Why, they said in what they thought was a trial, as prosecuting witnesses, they said, we did not have anything against him, they said. He was a desirable citizen. Only he allowed so many followers to go out there and sing and keep so much noise. We didn't want that. We wanted to get rid of that. They said they did not want to get rid of me. Now, who would want to get rid of success? And who is it that wants to get rid of prosperity and health and all happiness and wealth and honor, all dominion and authority? I have all of these qualities and not only have them, but I am them. Now, does anybody want to get rid of me? Do they want to get rid of success? Anybody that wants to get rid of me wants to get rid of health, of happiness, rid of prosperity and wealth and dominion and authority. For I have both it and them, and I manifest every desirable attribute that you can desire. I have both it and them. Having both it and them, I am trying to let all the world enjoy some of it. I am trying to let all the world partake of these. And I am trying to let them know that, as was said in St. John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, and of truth, then I am letting you know, and of all of his fullness have all we received, grace for grace. You did not receive it until as an heir, and as a joint heir with him you did receive it, as though you were the only begotten of the Father. For of all of his fullness have all we received, Grace for grace. That is what I came to let you know, that of all of his fullness has every last one of you received. On this foundation you live. On this foundation you can stand. For this foundation is incorruptible. It is undefiled and it fadeth not away. It is reserved in God for you and kept by the power within your reach, within your every bone. It is wonderful. Take these thoughts into consideration, dear ones, and the very God of peace, of life, and of love will be your refuge, and will be your strength, will be your help, and will be your aid. And you will have no more cause to talk about depression. You will have no more cause to talk about lack, wants, and limitations, and segregations, and prejudices. For where there is division, there is strife. And so closely as you are standing and sitting here this day, as in all other places where I go, even so shall you stand together mentally and spiritually, and socially and financially, and in every expression of good, and unify yourselves with the infinite whole, and let there be no division among you. Let there be no division among races, colors, sects, and denominations. 
Let there be no division among you, but be ye one, even as we are one, and fulfill that which Christ has prayed the Father to make them one. In the 17th chapter of St. John, then as with me, you will always have abundance. Not any of you will have occasion to be in the bread line. Not any of you will have occasion to be on the town. Neither will you have occasion to be on the city. You will not have occasion to become to be a public charge of any kind. For God will abundantly bless you, and you will have the abundance of the fullness of the consciousness of good, and no faith with you will be vacant of the fullness thereof, both in and on the material plane and on the spiritual plane. Neither will you lack for a vocabulary, for God will be in you, and in the time of need you will be able to prove it to the world even also as I do, that Christ is rich and all you need, and that none need lack in God's abundance, for there is a full and a plenty for all, and that all things come through God's mighty love to upward. Take these thoughts into consideration, dear ones, and you will be abundantly blessed, and all limitations will be abolished, and all lacks and wants also, and all prejudices, bigotry, for you shall be one with Christ and one with God, and you then will be even also as I am, for you will have the keys to the heaven and to the earth. You will have the keys to all of the mental world and to all of the vocabularies of the world. You will have the keys there too. And as they said concerning Jesus, Whence cometh this man with these things? For the letter he knoweth not. But whether he knows a letter or not, he has the key to all of the hidden vocabularies of the world and to all that he desires. He will give the keys to the hidden treasures of the earth and bring to you the desirable blessing that you all want. That is what all of this is about. That is what all of this excitement is about. It is because someone has the key to all underground treasures. It is because someone has the key to all of the mental vocabularies of the earth. Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. It is wonderful. Therefore, we that know the truth, we know that we have the keys to all of the intelligence of the earth and all of the hidden treasures and the wealth of the earth. And whatsoever we loose on the earth plane will be loose in the spiritual realm of life. And whatsoever we bind upon the earth will be bound in the spiritual realm of life. Therefore, it is a great privilege to be one with God. Take these thoughts in, dear ones. And as I said, if any of you have any kind of sickness or disease or any kind of complaint or any kind of trouble, I say it makes no difference what it is. Call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee. All you must need to do is to live an evangelical life. Live according to the life and teachings of Jesus the Christ, as recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And let this mind be in you that was also in him. And cast out of your system all of those undesirable characteristics and tendencies. And if you will call on me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee. If you have a headache, I don't care how severe your trouble may be. 
If you will consecrate your heart and your soul to God, call upon me in that day, and I shall deliver you. It is wonderful. Now it is wonderful, I say. That is not confined to person or personality. I want you to know that that I is applicable to every one of you. And when any one of you uses that capital I, that is yourself. And that I is applicable to every one of you when you get ready to use it. That I is what you in the truth world call the I am of you. And that I is what you call in the religious world the Christ in you. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee. And again I say unto you, the Christ in you and the Christ in me will make you what you ought to be, and will from all of your sorrows and miseries set you free, will set you free from every adverse condition and every undesirable circumstance I will express himself in you. That is the true desirable standard of life, and you will be desired of all men. Take these thoughts in, dear ones, and then you will not have occasion to say, this one doesn't want me around. But you will be able to say to the world that everybody is desirous of you for you have reflected that desirable attribute to all mankind. You can see how they all come to me. Sometimes I have known some fathers to have one child, one son, or one daughter, and say, my son or my daughter doesn't care anything about me, or he or she doesn't want to be around me. Some have a wife or a husband and say, well, he doesn't want me. Well, you get the desirable attribute of love, and they won't want anyone else. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. Charge yourselves up with this electric light magnet of love, and you will attract and draw them unto you and they will not be drawn unto anybody else but you. I know you would all rather come around me and hear me preach than anybody else, wouldn't you? You would rather come to my meetings than to go anywhere else, wouldn't you? It is wonderful. It is wonderful. You will follow me wheresoever I lead, won't you? It is wonderful. Anywhere and everywhere, it is wonderful. If I would tell you to vote a president in, you would vote him in, wouldn't you? If I would tell you to vote a president in, you would vote him in, wouldn't you? If I would tell you to vote him out, you would vote him out, wouldn't you? It is wonderful. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. It is indeed wonderful. Wonderful. That is what all of this is about. Then you would follow me where I lead you, and you would pasture wheresoever I feed you. And so it will be with every one of you if you get this electric life magnet of love. You will draw and attract all unto you. They won't want anybody else. It is wonderful. My followers don't want anybody else but me. And we are going to have only the righteous judge and the righteous governor and the righteous president that will do right. That is all. We are only going to have the one that will let Christ rule in him. I shall rule the world and I shall rule it in and through the hearts and minds of men. And the judge or the governor that will not do right, why, we are not going to have him on the bench. It is wonderful. 
but we are going to elect the one that will do right. For it is God that judges both the quick and the dead. Therefore I say unto you, Let not the righteous man glory in his righteousness, neither let the wise man glory in his wisdom, but let him that glorious glory in this, that I am the Lord that executeth righteousness and judgment in the earth, it is wonderful. I thank you, Father, 